testing requires you to think a bit more abstractly about your code, or at least you're, you're kind of like, instead of saying, I'm going to think about the problem and solve the problem, you have to think first about how to articulate a test for the problem. Mm -hmm. And then, so you're moving one level back, right? And I think for some people, there's um, maybe an impatience or maybe not really seeing the connection of, okay, well, if I write the test, the code is going to come and it's going to be okay. But it feels like, uh, you know, what's the old thing people used to go and make ships in bottles, you know, using the, the yeah. tweezer thing something like that. At least that's the, the metaphor. It's like, okay, I'm doing things at a distance in order to go and create the thing that I want. I think that's counterintuitive for people sometimes. I just... I could be wrong, but it's a guess. So, 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 do you think? Do you think it matters? Do, do you think it matters? Do you think? Do you think it's something that? So, I, I, I pushed quite hard for test-driven development. I, I, I recognize all that you say, but I do mm -hmm. try and push quite hard to encourage it and promote it. Do you think that's a sensible effort? I, I, I guess. I guess I'm trying to. I guess I'm trying to ask a, a leading question, and the the real question that I'm trying to get to is, it's I'm fairly hardline on test driven development. I think that software is almost never as high quality in its absence, and mm -hmm. that's a pretty hard line to take. But that means that it's important, therefore, to try and get people over that bump of there being one more thing to learn and 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 this separation but 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 th that's an effort that's worthwhile it's, yeah I, I totally agree that it's worthwhile and whenever i you know like uh you know it's funny you mentioned my book a little bit earlier but sometimes i think of my book as scare tactics for for test driven development <laughs> it's kind of like once you discover how hard it is to test existing code you're yeah. kind of like well i'm going to basically write tests from the very beginning so i don't encounter this problem right yeah um so yeah i, I do feel very strongly about it still um i think that the the rough part is basically there's sometimes some zeal around it, which can be beneficial at times, but also can be kind of off-putting for people. The yeah. way I always kind of look at it with um, developers I'm working with is, um, you know, give this a shot, see what it does for you. And I concentrate on their experience of pain yes. and sort of point out, it's like, this is a way of going and avoiding that problem of kind of like, you know, the story I always tell is like early in my career, you know, some friends would come by and say, hey, Mike, do you want to get some coffee? At like that one o'clock or two o'clock in the afternoon, I'd say, no, no, I'm juggling eggs because I'd torn up my coat so much and I wasn't sure I'd be able to go and sort of get it back in working state before leaving yeah. at the end of the day. And after applying to DDD, I just realized I could walk away at any moment and just press a button when I get back and see whether things are working or not. And, yeah. and that's a, a priceless feeling to be able to go and have as a developer, you know, to know that things are still working. Yeah, I, I I I got in, I got into the habit when when I was doing this on a daily basis. I don't write code every every single day anymore. But when I was writing code regularly for for real outcomes, I got mm -hmm. into the habit of of leaving leaving you know on my local computer just a failing test, so I could come back, yes. run the test, see it fail, and I could carry on from there. Yeah, it's <laughs> a bookmark. Can, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> just 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 leave continue my train of thought from the previous day. Yeah, it's all good. Uh, it's, it's, uh, so 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 I I, I I try hard not to be a zealot about things. I I, I try to think carefully about um, you know the reasons why why I want to do things. And, and as you say, you need to put it in context and help people to 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 the answer rather than wag fingers at them and tell them they're naughty if they don't do it. But yeah, it, it is one of those things. things yeah, the, the, it is one of those things that, that that's that's you know it's that, that that that's kind kind of kind of hard. You know, it's it, it, it's like you know, teaching your br children to brush their teeth so that their teeth don't fall out when <laughs> before they grow up. You know. Yeah, and I think the, <laughs> and the rough thing it seems also is like in a team situation, you get one person who's really excited, and then they become kind of yeah. like you know they're they're proselytizing throughout the team and everybody's like, oh, shut up. You know, it's kind of like, <laughs> I know this is working for you, but it's like, whatever, I don't want to hear about a TDD today, right? Yeah. So it's that thing of like, sort of like, um, is it a British term, a keener, a person who's very keen on things or something? Or like, you know, I don't know. Anyway, might, but like, might, be, might be Australian, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's kind of like, sometimes people have to be a little bit subtle. <laughs> you know, just going yeah, 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 ab absolutely. So, so, so one, one of the things, one of the things that, um, uh, one of the things that, that, that intrigued me, and, I, and I, it's a long time since I read your book, so, so it might be that you, that, that you wrote about this in your book, but one of the things that I want, 
one of the things that I think about in terms of um, uh, the difficult parts of doing test-driven development um, are what I call testing of the edge at the edges, the, the points where you, you're performing I/O of some kind, or you you're kind of reaching out and you know you you need to you need to come back in to the system in some way. And I you know I wondered whether one of the problems that makes it hard applying this kind of stuff in legacy code settings is that there are so many edges very often in those sorts of systems. Yeah, um, it's like there's no price to going and just introducing them because like, yeah. hey, you have an API you can use, I'll just use it right here, that kind of thing, right? Yeah. Um, so I think the interesting thing with testing is that to me, it seems like it introduces a constraint, which allows you to go and sort of like get some separation between the pure logic of your system and then basically the things which are IO related or external world related and stuff. And you know we, we've known for ages, like um, Alistair Coburn's notion of hexagonal architecture, for instance, yeah. that you want to have like this core, and then basically you have the periphery, which is kind of like contact with the world. But this is like a constraint that kind of helps people arrive there when they're doing TDD. Otherwise, yeah, it's it's rough. It's kind of like you have to do a lot of mocking or extracting of logic and pulling it in different places to make things testable in many cases, which is awful, you know. Yeah. So, 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 what, what are your kind of techniques to, to alleviate that problem? Uh, yeah. Well, I think it's kind of funny because you know I wrote the book ages ago. So, like this thing of synthesizing, you know, this. I, I think one thing I'm I always look for now is like, is the thing I'm working on a glue system, or is it more like a computational system in a way, right? Yeah, there's this some code I used as an exercise years ago, and I still use it at times. It's kind of like a code for a mail server in Java, right? So essentially, you send it mail, and it goes and sends it off to a bunch of you know uh, recipients. And when you look at the system, everything is a call to the Java Mail API, right? And except for maybe two or three things which are computational. And I think from my point of view, you've got a choice there. Like you're either going to go and um, you know, test the full thing end to end by really sending mail and having it send mail back to you. Yeah. Or you're going to find computational bits and try to go and isolate those and get test coverage around those in order to go and do the yeah. things you need to do. So you have to kind of know which kind of a system you're in. You know, are you one which is really mainly glue code between APIs or is it really a computational thing? And if it's a computational thing, um, then I think unit testing is really, you know, a good answer in that space to go and isolate yeah. the computational things and, and do the work that you need to do. Um, there's that. And I think the other thing I come back to, I don't know whether you get to it in, in your book. Um, I've got your book also. I haven't read fully at this point, but the um, uh, the notion that you don't have to test everything right away. You know, essentially, it's like test as you need to change things. Yeah. And, um, you know, the way that things happen in systems, you know, it's like some areas will never touch again and other areas you're going to touch over and over again. And, yeah. you know, the latter tests and, you know, you don't have to be, upset that you only have like 52 percent coverage in your system it may be that way in two years also it might be more up to 60 yeah but number isn't the goal you know it's just getting coverage for what you need to do yeah yeah and and, and as you I, I, as you say you know doing that tactically in the parts of the system that matter to you at the time when you're working you you make, yeah. make the bits where you're working habitable yeah totally habitable i love that word for that yeah, yeah. yeah.